Hi YouTube! Welcome back to my channel. So today I am going to be talking about what I believe are essential pieces when starting building your luxury jewelry collection. So my first luxury item was actually a necklace from Tiffany and that was actually my first couple of luxury items was jewelry. And while jewelry does not have necessarily the highest resale value of the luxury items, it is to me, my favorite luxury category because there is so much variety, but it's also so practical and so versatile. And I believe that the pieces that I'm going to talk about in today's video really show that and express that. And I hope that you guys really enjoy this. If you do, make sure to hit the like button, make sure to subscribe, as that does help my channel and helps other people find these videos as well. So with that, let's get into it. So most of the pieces that I'm going to be recommending today are actually going to be pieces that are from the big luxury houses. However, there are some pieces that I believe you really are better off going through your local jeweler. Now the first thing on this list is I believe that you need a classic dressy set and that means earrings and necklace. Now. To me, I think that you need to go with one of three options, and within each of these categories, I'm going to be providing normally two to three options. And first off, I think is that classic pearl set, which is just the pearl necklace, the simple pearl stud earrings, and you can find these sets, particularly now with graduation and Mother's Day coming up, you see a lot of sales going on, a lot of promotions going on, and pearls over the past couple of years have actually become much less expensive, even for the real saltwater Koya pearls. So you can easily find a set like this for around $500. I personally think that going with a 16 inch length is a really good length because that is going to give you some versatility. Now, if pearls are not your thing, if that feels a little too old, a little too stuffy, which to me, they're just a classic, maybe you want to go with a diamond solitaire with diamond solitaire studs. Now this is obviously much more expensive than the pearl option, but again, you get such a better value even for the same quality pieces than if you stick that Tiffany or that Cartier label on or any of those other major jewelry brands because they do jack up the price because you're buying it from them. And pearls and diamonds are pieces where unless it's in some type of signature to that house layout or design, no one's gonna know that it came from there, unlike several of these other pieces that are going to be on the list. So for me, I think that you just get such a better value going through your local jeweler. Now, if you wanna kind of fall in the middle, well, there are of course pearl diamond combos. So that would be like, I have a piece that I got from our local jeweler that looks like the Tiffany Victoria collection, which I'll put a picture here. And I love that piece. I think that it is a way to do pearl in a little bit younger, a little bit more modern way while still being very classic. You also get diamonds in there, but you can often get a little bit bigger, more substantial piece than going with just diamonds, even though it will be probably slightly more expensive than diamonds, but that just is what it is. And I feel like that having one of these three sets is going to give you a lot of versatility because these are things you can wear every day, but you can also wear these for much more dressy or much more formal events. Personally, I think that going with the pearl set is the real way to go. Now, the second category is going to be an everyday necklace. Now, probably, honestly, my favorite necklace in my entire collection is going to be in this category, and that is the David Yerman crossover bar necklace. The thing that I love about this necklace is that you can wear it on a side showing more silver or showing more gold, and you can see that a little bit more clearly in my jewelry collection video, which I'll put up here with my luxury jewelry. Now, this necklace comes in at $650, and it does have signature German cabling, signature mixing of 
the sterling silver with gold. I will link my brand history videos down below for any brand that I've mentioned, and I'll try to link them up here as well if you want more information on the individual brands. Now, I love this necklace. It's my favorite necklace. But you may be someone who wants something more substantial, and in that case, I think that going with the Return to Tiffany toggle necklace. Now, there is a version that has a lobster clasp, but I think that the toggle looks much better and it's not substantially more expensive to go with the toggle. The neat thing about this necklace is that you can personalize it a little bit. So this would be, of course, an extra fee. The necklace is $800, but you can change the charm. Say you want a circle, say you want the regular heart that comes on it, but you also want a bigger heart underneath. You can do that with this necklace. Now they will have to ship it to New York in order to have that done. But even if you just got the necklace now, you could absolutely do that at a later date and they'll still ship it to New York for it to be worked on. I've known people who they've gotten the bracelet version and they've added a different heart on for each um, loved one. You can do the same thing with the necklace. If you wanted to add several hearts on and maybe put, say, your kid's initials on there if you wanted to. And this is definitely a more substantial piece, but it's such a signature Tiffany piece that if you're going to have Tiffany jewelry, this is absolutely a piece that really should be in your collection at some point. Now, if the bar is not your thing, but if you still like that more simple, small stature, the final piece that I'm going to recommend is again a mixed metal piece, and that is going to be from Cartier. Now this is the most expensive of the three necklaces at 1370, but this has gold, rose gold, and white gold all mixed in on it and is such a beautiful piece. They have different versions. Some versions have diamonds added to them, some versions have a single chain, some versions have a double chain. And so there is some versatility within that, but this is the Cartier Trinity necklace. And I think that it is a beautiful piece. It's definitely something that is on my wish list to get at some point. Um, now, my favorite of these three is the Yerman piece, but I think that any of these three, depending on your particular style, would be an excellent option to go for when first starting out to build your luxury collection. Now, moving from necklaces, you need to have earrings to go with these. And my mom, when I was younger, would tell me that it, as opposed to the common saying, you're never fully dressed without a smile, she'd say, you're never fully dressed without a pair of earrings. And I definitely feel that way a lot. I intentionally did not wear any jewelry for this video, but normally I would always have on at least a pair of earrings in addition, of course, to my wedding set. But I think that for this, you really sort of want to coordinate your choice of earrings with your choice of necklace. Now, if you're going with the Yerman, and one thing that I love about Yerman is the fact that you can mix and match the pieces so well because everything really coordinates, but the crossover earrings, they have a small, a medium, and a large size ranging from set, ranging from 575 to 675. I have these small pair and I love them. They are very, very light, and I'm someone who has to be careful with that because my ear piercings were not done particularly well, and so they are very elongated, so I have to be careful about the type of earrings that I wear but these are very nice, particularly for every day. But if you will look at one of the other two necklaces, I don't particularly think that the Tiffany and Cartier earrings have the best value. So what I would actually recommend is again, going to your local jeweler and picking a pair of earrings that best coordinates in a gold. So for instance, if you went with the sterling silver Tiffany necklace, going with a simple white pair of gold hoops and of course, there are varying thicknesses, varying sizes, depending on what you enjoy for your own personal style. With the Cartier, because the chain, I think the chain on all of them, is going to be rose gold, I would probably go with a rose gold pair of plain simple ball stud, because I think that that would work really well with the shape of the necklace. And because you are not putting that really expensive label, you can easily get a pair of solid gold hoops for under $200. Now, moving on down our body, I think that bracelets are a fantastic thing and everyone needs a good either cuff or bangle bracelet in their collection. Now, to me, I think that the best place to go for bracelets is Yerman. I have four 
I have four different Yerman bracelets and I love all of them and I have a couple on my list that I'm hoping to get at some point over the next couple of years. Now anyone who's watched my channel knows that I love the classic cable pearl bracelet in the five millimeter size the best but I think that there are a lot of other really good options as well. They do a lot of gorgeous bangles that have a really nice spring on them. I mean, you have several different varieties of the classic cable bracelet, which I think maybe they do classify it as a bangle, but it does have an opening where you either wear the opening on the top or the opening on the bottom. And that's really nice because you can flex it to meet your wrist. And both of those options are super easy to put on by yourself. But if you don't like that, they do have some beautiful chain bracelets as well. The downside to those is that while it's easy to get on by yourself relatively, it's pretty hard to get off by yourself. And so generally I either fiddle with it for like 15 minutes before I finally get it off, or I have to have my husband come and help me, which is why I really recommend the bangle, particularly if you're someone who lives by yourself. But I think that this is an essential thing and there are so many varieties at Yerman ranging from most of them go from about 350 up to about 750 for a lot of the different styles of bracelets which gives you a wide variety different stones different styles and so i think that that's where you really need to go i've put some different pictures on this on the screen i think that they're just so many wonderful varieties now well, I also think that while looking at your wrist, I think that everyone really does need a right-handed ring in their life. I was not a big ring person at all, and what I found when I was wearing my engagement ring is I liked having another ring over here to keep it balanced. I am a little OCD, so I do like things. Well, I don't want them to be symmetric, I want them to be balanced. And so I think that that's where I've really come to love having rings on my right hand as well. There are two that I'd recommend while in the bracelet category a lot of people recommend the love bracelet i don't like that one because you have to wear it all the time if you get the classic love bracelet two because they get so scratched so damaged so easily that it is not worth the price tag but what i think is a better alternative if you still like that love style is going with the love ring they have a small version as well as i think it's called the wedding band version which i believe is a little bit thicker a small version of the love ring comes between 1770 and 1250 depending on if you choose yellow gold rose gold or white gold the white gold is the more expensive and then the yellow gold and rose gold are the same price and so that gives you a really really nice just simple but very classic ring and anyone who knows who's the Cartier love collection at all is going to recognize that ring and so I think that, that is actually a pretty good investment piece, particularly since it is solid gold. Now, if you want to go with sterling silver instead, I would actually go to Tiffany. And the Tiffany, and the Tiffany 1837 rings, I love. I have the medium size, but they do have a small and a larger version. The small is pretty much just like a regular wedding band thickness. The large takes up like my entire knuckle space there and so I think it depends on how big you want that ring to be it does say Tiffany 1837 on it and these are priced at 275 350 and 450 respectively for the different sizes in that ring and I feel that that's a pretty fair price jump because honestly you get a lot more ring as you go up in the different sizes now the final piece of jewelry that had you asked me this two years ago i would have had probably a very different list but the piece that i think is really just something that every woman at some point in their life and really every person at some point in their life should invest in and that is a really nice high quality watch now that's not to say there's anything wrong with going and getting a fossil watch or a michael kors watch but there is something about those higher quality watches that they just make them extra special my father-in-law has a couple of brightlings husband has a tag her and i think that those are really great for men but i think that for women and it's really interesting on youtube you can go in and look at the analytics of your channel and about like 94 percent of you guys are women so for women I think that going with the Cartier Tank Frank Case watch is a fantastic watch to go with. Obviously the price is going to vary if you go with a leather band, a steel band, the mixed steel and gold, 
or the solid gold. Now, I personally think that going with the steel version is going to be your best investment. And this is just such an extremely classic watch. I absolutely love this watch. I have it and I wear it basically every day. And it has held up extremely well over the past year. It really doesn't have any scratches on it at all. Now, I think that probably the best value of the luxury watches is actually going to be Omega. I would actually love to get maybe one or two more watches. And my next watch that I get, I think will definitely be an Omega. They are beautiful, they're lightweight, but they are extremely durable and some of the best made watches in the world. They're also extremely well priced for that upper tier of watch. And their models, depending on if you're going with a leather band, steel band, or all gold, you are going to see price jumps from like $1,000 below the Cartier price up to like $10,000 less than the Cartier equivalent. And they are focused on creating quality watches that are not so exorbitantly expensive that no one can ever buy them or only like the mega wealthy can buy them. And I think that that's one thing that I really like. I also like the workings. I think that they are extremely well made. Watches that I do not think are well made at all is Tiffany. Those are watches that are notorious for breaking and having a lot of issues. And the reason I don't have a Rolex on this list is because honestly, I don't like how Rolex feels. It's an extremely heavy watch and people are like, oh, that's because it's better made. No, it's because like they actually put a lead weight in there to give it weight. And Rolexes are so hard to come by anyway. Resellers are jacking up the price like crazy. I just really don't like their business model. And so that's why I've not put Rolex on this list. Not to say that they're a bad watch brand, just that I much prefer going with the Cartier Tank or the Omega. Now the thing to note about Cartier is that they do have two lines of their mo of some of their most popular women's watches and I don't know if some of the other lines have this as well but there is a lower priced model and it'll have a slightly different name so like it won't say the tank frank case it'll be something else but they are actually made with just regular watch works as opposed to being made with the Cartier specific watch works and so you want to make sure that they are definitely the Cartier works because that is just such a higher quality level watch. And when you're paying that price, you expect to get the highest quality of watch works that you can. So if you guys would like to have a video of me talking much more about in-depth watches, talking about what to look for in watches, let me know and I will be happy to do that. Also, I am going to be doing a Q&A video soon, and that includes personal questions, luxury questions, whatever you guys want to know from me. So if you have any questions that you'd like me to include in the Q&A, either put them down in the comments below or shoot me a message over on Instagram. My name's the exact same, Accounting for Luxury, and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Bye!